Hello and welcome to the part four of the House of Wisdom Knife Collection. We're going to be starting at the Striders and going through the Zero Tolerances today. Would any knife collection really be complete without a Strider? I don't think so. The Grails historically have been Chris Reeve knives, Hinder knives, and Strider knives, so this is sort of a flash from the past. This is the Strider PT in Lego form. The Lego is a little different because it's a little boxier. It has a G10 handle. And this, with its forward finger choil, just fits like a glove. It has this flange here, and this is one of the best knives in hand that you will ever have. Note at the large sharpening ricasso that protects your hand uh, from the blade there. So uh, this feels really good in hand, and Strider has a great ergonomic knife here in the PT. The PT in the Strider is... 2.75 inch blade. It weighs 2.5 ounces. It uses S30V steel. That's the Strider PT Lego. The next knife is very similar. It's the Strider PT, but this is in the CC version. The CC version is the same size and length basically, except that it's a 2.5 75 inch blade. It weighs 0.2 ounces less at 3.2 ounces. It uses S30 V steel also. The differences are this does not have a clip and it's designed to just be the ultra light and just bounce around in your pocket. And the handle scales, instead of being squared off, are smooth and rounded. And uh, it's the same idea though. Strider PTCC. And then the last Strider I have is kind of an interesting thing. It's the SJ75. And this is the, I'm going to say the ugliest knife there is. It's so ugly, it's cute, but it feels great in hand. And the lock bar geometry on this is a work of art. He went a long way from the Strider PT versions. Uh, he has a lot of interesting tooling. On the back spine of the blade, he has this tooling that goes on both, both sides, and this tooling extends onto the handle, so it has this cool aesthetic theme there. Um, the uh, Mini Huey is the nickname, and I don't know the story behind that, nor have I been able to find it out. It has a 3-inch blade, and uh, it weighs 3.8 ounces. It uses CPM 154 steel. That's the Baby Huey otherwise known as the SJ-75 Strider. Okay, this next one is interesting. VDK Faro, and Vlad usually makes these huge murdery knives, and he appeased us small and light knife people with this, and oh, did he do a great job. Look at the carbon fiber double bolsters and the um, uh, Persian-style blade, and the action on this is just world class. This is a huge value. It's just, it was made in limited uh, supply, so it's hard to get a hold of one. It has a three inch blade. It weighs 3.6 ounces. It uses S35 VN steel. That's the VDK Faro. The next knife on the list is the Rockstead Heisen. This knife uses EDP 189 and they polish it to a mirror finish. I'm just going to see if I can get to appreciate that, that polished mirror finish, zero grind blade, and it ends in a concave edge. Uh, and the handle is aluminum, but look at the cool sculpting that it has on it. This is a beautiful knife. But the thing that this knife is really about is the blade. They get it this up to a Rockwell hardness of 67, and each knife has a little dimple on the blade. Let's see if you can appreciate that. Can you appreciate that little dimple there? I'll try to get a close up on it. There's a little dimple there, and that's where they they Rockwell hardness test each blade, and each blade comes with a birth certificate, including its heart Rockwell hardness score. So that is the Rockstead Heisen. The Rockstead Heisen has a 2.875 inch blade. It weighs 2.4 ounces. The next knife is a inexpensive Schrade uh, ceramic blade. It has a carbon fiber handle. It's an inexpensive blade and this is an okay blade if you wanted to try a, a uh, 
uh, ceramic handle blade out. It has a 2.7 inch blade. It weighs 1.6 ounces and it's ceramic. It costs less than $25. It's just a cheap little knife. If you want to try a ceramic out one, that's a good one to try. We're going to the Riot knives now. Riot is a great manufacturing company. This is the Starboy, which is a Tashi Barusha knife design. You can see Tashi's uh, maker mark there. And it has a hand rub satin blade. This custom anodizing job was done by Jeff Perkins at uh, JD Cutlery. He does a great job with that. And then he, uh, he, it's a teal green, and then he stone washes it and then anodizes over it in a bronze, and then the hardware is bronze too. So, really great looking knife and has the typical Toshi motive, which is the blade is oversized in comparison to the handle, and the cutting edge is below the edge of the handle. So, it, it's a great slicer. This has a great action, it's just a great knife all over. It has a three and a quarter inch blade. It weighs 4.19 ounces. It uses RWL 34 steel. And moving on to the lightest and best of Riot. This is the Riot Wave. It has a three and an eighth inch blade. It weighs 3.76 ounces. It uses M390 steel. It has this milling and anodizing overlay on the handle. It is like Riot, perfectly made, perfect action. Riot does such a great job with everything that they do. The next is a very interesting knife. I think one of the most interesting knife I have. It is made by Millet Knives, and it is a collaboration between Serge Pachenko and Gavin Hawk. Pachenko made the blade. He likes the cleaver style, style of blades, and Gavin Hawk designed the handle, including the Hawk Lock. The Hawk Lock is a lot like an axis lock, the way it looks anyway, except that you only pull down on one side, and it just falls shut. And uh, Serge, whenever I talked to him, said, don't try to undo this lock because it's kind of complicated getting together. And uh, I saw another reviewer, Epic Snuggle Bunny, had uh, a time where he tried to take it apart and it went about a million pieces and he had a time getting it back together. So I don't try to take it apart, but it is a lot of fun to flip. This uh, Millet Hawk Pachanko Orbit uh, is has a blade of 3 inches long. It weighs 3.5 ounces. It uses 204 piece steel and it is a great little knife. It is very interesting. The next knife I have is the Ontario Rat 2 and everybody should own one of these. I'm calling this the best budget knife that there is. It costs less than $25. This is an Aus 8. They recently come out with the Rat at the same price in D2 steel which I would recommend that you get and it's a testimony that you can have a uh, a blade on washers and have a great great action. So the Ontario Rat 2 has a 3 inch blade, it weighs 2.75 ounces. Again this is Aus 8 steel. Great little knife. It comes in a variety of handle colors also. The next knife is the Sog Flash 1. This is back in my nut and fancy days. This was one of his favorite knives. The Sog Flash 1 is a small knife. It has a 2.5 inch blade. It only weighs 1.3 ounces. It has Aus 8 steel. It really disappears in your pocket. You release this lever and then it's an assisted blade and then it locks out and you pull back on this little thing and it does that. And I've carried this all over the world. It has this deep carried end detached clip and you don't even know that it's there. It's very unintimidating. It's a very inexpensive knife. So the Sog Flash 1, this is a good gateway to get into knife collecting. And this is the Southern Grind uh, Spider Monkey. It has a three and a quarter inch blade. It uh, weighs 3.1 ounces. It uses S35 Vian steel. It is a great knife. The thing that's great about this knife is the handle is beautifully made. It has a lead up to your thumb stud. It has some milling back here so that you get a good grip. And look at the logo on it. It has this kind of an angry monkey look there. See if you can get that. That's just a cool maker's mark. Of all my knives that I have, this one I would vote for this and the Strider PT are the ones that feel best in hand because they have this enlargement here that fits the triangular part of your hand there. And 
this just really fits like a glove in your hand, the Southern Grind Spider Monkey. Moving along, we have the J.D. Van Deventer Pinstripe. Its blade is 2.875 inches. It weighs uh, 2.1 ounce. Excuse me. It weighs 2 ounces even. He uses N690 steel. And this is a great little knife. He has a nested liner lock, and there's no liner on the show side. It's just this nested liner on the clip side. And this is a great little knife. It fits in your pocket great, and it is two ounces of happiness. It has that South African smooth a action also. Moving along, we have the Zeba S1 Mini. It has a 2 inch, five, two and 5 eighths inch blade. It weighs 2.288 ounces, uses S35 Vian steel. It has a hollow ground kind of rounded tonto blade. Isn't this a great looking knife? Look at that oval lanyard hole. He has a gear shaped back spacer and the accompanying uh, clip in the same manner. Uh, Zeb is the guy that uses the devil tail usually on his clip, but he wanted to match the clip with the backspacer. I think it looks really nice, and this is one of those great little three-finger knives. I want to point out the similarity between the Nick Chuprin knife and the Zeba knife. Don't those guys look like twins? It's interesting that Zeba and Chuprin both live in New York City, but their knives look a lot alike and about the same size and that same same distinctive look, but this is a great little knife. It flips out strong. Love the 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 Zeba S1 Mini. Okay, now we're going to go to the Shirogorovs. If you want to get a lot of happiness, just get a Shirogorov. This is knife perfection. The Shirogorov Neon Ultralight is three and a quarter inches long. It weighs three ounces. It uses S30V steel. It comes in a variety of steel. The Ultralight has a standoff as opposed to backspacer. And everything is simplistic and minimalistic on this knife. Look at that beautiful, simple drop point blade. Look how handsome the maker's mark is with the Shirogorov bear there. Everything about this I like. I like the pivots. They have a proprietary pivot, but you can just use a coin or a flathead screwdriver to undo the pivot. And the action is great. It has a multi-row bearing system, which is like an IKBS system, except there's a double row of bearings. And this is understanding what they say and what they mean whenever they say sure or go off smooth. Recently, they came out with a car carbon ver fiber version of the Neon, and they call it the Hation, which is like a combination between the Hattie and the Neon, but really, it's a Neon. The Hattie part is just that they used carbon fiber, and uh, it has a very similar action. I'll put away the Neon light here. Uh, the Hation has a backspacer like the Neon Light, and remember, the Ultralight just has a standoff, but it also has a a great flipping action and is very smooth. That's the Shirogorov Neon. On the Hatsion, they put the maker mark on the blade, the bear on the blade. Show it there. There you go. Shirogorov knives. Everybody needs one. Okay, we're going to start in with the zero tolerance knives. We're making our way through the alphabet and we're down to the Z's. This is the Zero Tolerance 0562 in carbon fiber. It has a three and a half inch blade. It weighs 5.5 ounces. It uses CTX 204P steel. This has an anodizing job, uh, a drizzle by Jeff Perkins also. And it's got this, what a hinderer would call a slicer grind. And this is a great knife. It's like a hinderer on bearings. It has the hinder over travel stop. If you want a hinder that has a smooth action, this is the most smooth hinderer you'll ever find, and it's made by Zero Tolerance. The Zero Tolerance 0562, it's a nice large knife. The next knife is a Zero 900, and this is a uh, takeoff of the Les George Harpy. It uh, is a 2.7 inch blade, weighs 4.3 ounces, uses S35 EN steel. This was discontinued as of the, the end of 2017. Of the two knives that I'm saddest about being discontinued is the Spyderco Sleash Bowie and the Zero Tolerance 0900. This is just a great knife. 
Moving on next, we have the Zero Tolerance 0770, and this is a takeoff of the Zero Tolerance 777. And as you know, there's a big controversy between Microtech and their matrix and the 777 and who owned the patent first. And so there have been several takeoffs, and this is one of them, the 0770, and it is an assisted uh, blade. Kershaw also made the Natrix, which is sort of a dig at the matrix of Mitratech. And this year they come out with the bare knuckles, all of which are, uh, get inspiration from the 777. But if you had to get a 777 imitation, I would go with the Zero Tolerance 770 because Zero Tolerance has a little higher quality than the Kershaw line of Kai USA. And that's the 0770. Coming up is the lightest knife that I'm aware that Zero Tolerance makes, and that's the 0460. It has this lovely Persian style blade. It has this reddish carbon fiber, milled scales. It is just a lovely knife. The other thing it uses, which I really like, is the hexagonal captive pivot of Kai USA. A really great knife if you like Persian style blades. And then the knife that came and preceded it is the 0450 Zero Tolerance. And I have named this my favorite low-end production knife ever as far as a flipper goes. And I'll give this knife as a present to somebody. This is a great flipper without parallel in its class. The, my favorite high-end production flipper was the Shirogorov Neon or the Hation. But as far as low-end production flippers, my favorite is this one, the Zero Tolerance 0450, a great knife. Moving on from the Great Knife to a Great Knife Company, Alamic is one of the best companies. They, you can custom order the details of your knife, and for the price of a production knife, you can get a knife customized exactly what you wanted. This is the 24-7 Wayfair, and they made it just like I wanted. This is the Acid Rain version where they have the different size holes, and they even made different size holes on the clip. It has this beg style clip with a ceramic traction ball. And the action, fit, and finish are just wonderful on this knife. Olamic Tactical is a great company, and the 24-7 Wayfair is a great knife. The Wayfair um, has a 3.45-inch blade. It weighs 4.6 ounces. The steel is M390. And my other Olamic Tactical knife I have just came out recently. It's a front flipper. It is called the Busker. It comes in a Largo and a Semper blade. I got the Largo blade, which has a rounded top. The Semper blade is the same, except it has a little clip there. And Olamic Tactical does this special treatment on the scales called the uh, Kinetic treatment. This is in the Kinetic Ocean color. They have three different colors of the kinetic finish, but as you can see, it's kind of rough in lines, and it's a great, great knife. It has the Todd Begg style traction clip with the ceramic detent ball too, and look at that great backspacer they put on there. This is just a great knife. This is the Olamic Busker. It's a wonderful flipper. It's a great fidget toy, and I think you'll really like it. Moving on, we're getting into the Reich knife. This is the lightest and best from Reich. It is the 1508S. It has a three and a quarter inch blade. It weighs 3.77 ounces, uses M390 steel. The blade is just beautiful. It has like a bead blast finish on the blade. It is lovely, it's beautiful. And the handle, they do such extensive milling and anodizing, and it's an integral, so if you want an Integral that's a little bit on the lower end of the scale, the Reich 1508 is yours. It has great fit and finish, wonderful knife. Moving into one of the South African knives, this is the Steam Camp Hornet Flipper. It has a blade that is 3.375 inches. It weighs 6.1 ounces. It uses N690 steel, and it, this one has a the, car, uh, the twill... Uh, carbon fiber handle. It has zirconium bolsters. On every one of his knives, he puts a little cross on the inside of the liner. He's a Christian man, and so I really respect that about him. Has that wonderful South African action. It's the Steam Camp Hornet Flipper. Great knife. 
The next knife is the Viper Odino in carbon fiber. It's a Vox Nest design, and if you have don't have enough money to buy a Vox Nest design like I did, and you can get one of these Odinos, it has a 2.875 inch blade. It weighs 4.35 ounces. It uses N690 CO steel, and it's a great knife. Uh, the fit and finish are great. Uh, its action is great, and it has that Vox Nest design. Moving along to the next knife is the William, West, William Henry Westcliff B7 in carbon fiber. It has a 3-inch blade. It only weighs 1.2 ounces. It's one of the lightest and best knives you can get. The steel on this particular knife is ATS-34, and it has stainless steel hardware that has actual gold plating overlying it. It has this anodized clip also. It is a button lock, and look at the free fall action of this knife. Wow, it is just perfection. If you like a Warren Kiff blade, especially with a button lock and a life knife, this is the knife for you. And we're getting down to the Grimsmo knives. This is the Norseman. It is a CNC knife. This is the first style of knife that uh, the Grimsmo brothers, Eric and John ever made, and it is just perfection. The Grimsmo knife, it has this custom CNCing, and the action is just world class. I have some rasks that I'm going to show you also, but this is a heavy knife, and it's a chunky knife, but it is a great knife. The Grimsmo Norseman. The next knife I wanted to show you guys is the Skiff Bandit, and I know you hear that each time I say this is my favorite knife, but this really is one of my favorite knives. Uh, Skiff won the Tactical Knife of the Year Award in 2017, and I was on his order books for a custom before he order, uh, got that award. Since then, he's gone to be a full-time knife maker. His book backup log got five years, and so he decided he could make a living of it. The blade on the Bandit is three inches. It weighs 3.6 ounces. He uses CPM 154 steel, and the customized features that I have, I wanted an orange peel on the surfaces with polished edges, and he did that lovely. And then he uses this black tie mascus on the clip and the pivots. Doesn't that look great? Uh, black tie mascus is tie mascus, except they put some zirconium in there with some of the layers, so it gives it that black nature. And this knife, the grind, the hand rub satin finish, the mechanics and function of the knife, Everything about this Skiff Bandit is perfect. One of my favorite knives in the world, the Steve Skiff Bandit. And next coming up is the Protec Brend 2. And I don't have many out the front knives, but I wanted to have one for my collection. I spent a lot of time researching all the out the fronts to see what would be the lightest and best. And I came up with the Brend 2 by Protec. It has a Coca-Cola wood overlay. And the uh, Bren 2 has a 2.9 inch blade. It weighs 1.9 ounces. It's very light and it uses 154 CM steel. This is a great knife. And if you like out the fronts and want something light that just disappears in your park but really flies out fast, you should consider the Bren 2. Great knife. My next knife is probably something that you've never heard of. It is the Sander Contra Flipper. It has a 4-inch hand rub satin blade. It weighs 3.7 ounces. It uses M390 steel. And Sander's is a Russian knife maker. Little known guy, but this has the smoothness of a Shirogorov or a Grimsmo Rask easily. This is just a great knife. There are only 100 of this uh, Contra Flipper made, and I got one at Blade 2017. It's a great knife, and it's a large knife. Uh, so that's the Sanders Contra Flipper. And last but not least, I wanted to show you about some of the Rask collection I have. Uh, I had more, but I sold off some because these are the ones that my kids wanted. Whenever they graduate high school, they get to pick out one of my favorite knives, and I still have three that haven't graduated high school. Luke said that this was his favorite. It's a damascus steel blade. It has a gold crosshatch handle with a DLC clip standoffs and 
hardware. And that's Luke's favorite Rask. And then Andrew he wanted this one. It's a damn steel blade all, so it has a blue handle and silver standoffs with a blue clip and the crosshatch pattern. And then Corbin, my youngest, wanted the DLC one. He wanted it all murdered and blacked out. It's, it's a black handle, and then the hardware standoffs are uh, silver, and it has a silver stonewashed blade. And then this is Papa's, the Timascus. The show side scale is Timascus. It's got gold standoffs and hardware. And then the back side is blue uh, angled uh, Timascus. And then the clip is, excuse me, titanium. And then the clip is a Timascus clip. But look how beautiful that Timascus is. Isn't that just gorgeous? Okay, well, that's the Rask collection. The Rask is a 3.4 inch blade. It weighs 3.1 ounces. It uses RWL 34 steel. And the perfection in machining is hard to explain, but again, this is a knife that I'm going to say is my favorite knife. But this is just a drop shut knife, and they machine the Dickens out of this as far as their tight tolerances, which gives it this wonderful action. And uh, the, the Rask is just a world-class knife. I really appreciate it and enjoy it. And so, okay, that is the end of part four of the knife collection. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have a favorite knife, let me know in the comments section which was your favorite. And we'll see you on the next Lightest and Best House of Wisdom knife review video. Mm -hmm.